This video will walk you through the disassembly and reassembly of the Microsoft Surface Studio 2 Plus. Before you begin, ensure that your work surface is covered with an ESD-safe, non-marring material. Equip an anti-static wrist strap, ensure your work area is properly grounded and safe, and lastly, make sure you're wearing protective eyewear as a safety precaution. Make sure that you're using a Microsoft Service Guide for your specific device and using Microsoft official parts only for any repair that you're performing. The Service Guide has more detailed step-by-step -step instructions and clarification for terms or references that you may not be familiar with. To begin disassembly, ensure that your device is powered off and has been disconnected from a power supply for at least 30 seconds. Place the device face down on your ESD safe surface with the base facing you. Using a spudger, gently pry off each of the non-skid feet and then clean the recesses with some isopropyl alcohol to remove any of the adhesive residue. Using your T8 Torx driver, remove the four screws securing the cosmetic plate to the base. Partially separate all edges of the cosmetic plate using the flat edge of a spudger but don't completely remove the plate yet. Carefully peel away the foam tape holding the cosmetic plate to the fan. The foam tape can be found underneath the Microsoft logo on the cosmetic plate, but be careful, it's delicate and easily torn. Remove the cosmetic plate and clean off any adhesive residue with some isopropyl alcohol and some cotton swabs. There are eight T8 Torx screws securing the fan cover. Remove those and then open the fan cover about 45 degrees. While holding the fan cover open, gently reach in and disconnect the two fan cables and speaker cable from the motherboard. The fan cover can now lift off. Use an H5 hex socket to remove the black standoff bolt from the right side of the chassis, and then use a T10 Torx driver to loosen the eight screws securing the thermal module in place. These eight screws are captive and won't come all the way out. Gently rotate the thermal module from left to right to break the bond from the thermal material and then lift it out. Using some isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab, clean off the residual thermal material from the CPU and GPU, and then remove the thermal pad from the SSD if it's still in place. Using your T8 Torx driver, remove the single screw securing the left hinge cover, and then use the flat end of a spudger to gently pry off the left hinge. If any adhesive remains, clean it off with some isopropyl alcohol. Using an H5 hex socket, remove the silver standoff from the left side of the power plug receptacle. And then using a T8 Torx driver, remove the screw on the right side. The power supply is secured to the chassis by one H5 hex standoff and a T8 Torx screw. Remove those and then gently disconnect the two power cables from the motherboard. Using two hands, remove the power supply from the chassis. If your RSSD still has a thermal pad attached, gently peel it off to remove it. The thermal pad can stick to either the RSSD or the thermal module during disassembly. Either way, you'll need to replace it during reassembly. The RSSD is secured to the motherboard by a single T3 Torx screw. Remove that and then lift the RSSD to about a 15 degree angle and slide it out of its socket on the motherboard. Remove the single T8 Torx screw securing the right hinge cover and then use the flat end of a spudger to lift it off the hinge. If any adhesive remains, clean it off with some isopropyl alcohol. Use the flat end of a spudger to release the lock bar from the ribbon cable underneath the right hinge, and then slide the cable up to disconnect it. Release the locking bars for the two ribbon cables next to the left hinge, and then slide the cables out to disconnect them. Flip the white locking tab up to unlock the audio port connector's cable, and then slide the cable out to disconnect it. While securing the motherboard with one hand, use a T8 Torx driver to remove the three screws securing the motherboard to the chassis. Slide the motherboard out using both hands. Firmly squeeze the top of the hinge cover with both hands to release the retaining tabs from the back of the display. You should hear an audible click. Rotate the hinge cover back and then press on the bottom of the cover to release the bottom clips. Use your T6 Torx driver to remove the 12 screws securing the hinge bracket to the display. Remove the left and right antenna covers, and then carefully peel up the copper tape from the antennas. Position the antennas so that the metal plate can be lifted without snagging them, and then lift it off. Pull up on the black tab on each of the four display cables to disconnect them. Finally, while supporting the display with one hand, remove the nine T8 Torx screws securing the hinge to the display. Once those are removed, 
Lift the hinge off the display. To begin reassembly, position the hinge over the display, aligning the screw holes on the back of the display with the holes on the hinge. Support the display with one hand to raise it slightly, and then install the nine screws securing the hinge to the display. Align each display cable over their connectors and press all of the four cables into place. Place the hinge plate back into place, making sure the antennas aren't under it, and then align the hinge plate with the notches on the hinge. Using your T6 Torx driver, install two of the hinge plate screws in the positions shown. While positioning the right antenna over its screw holes, place the right antenna cover into place and install the two screws securing it to the display. Repeat this procedure for the left hand side. Reinstall copper tape over both antennas and then screw in the remaining four screws securing them to the display. Place the stiffening bar into place and then secure it with two T6 Torx screws. Slide the bottom clips of the hinge cover into the holes in the back of the display, and then rotate it forward and squeeze to engage the clips on the top of the cover. The clips are fragile, and if any break, the hinge cover must be replaced. Using two hands, slide the motherboard into the chassis, aligning the board with the screw holes. Secure the motherboard to the chassis with three T8 Torx screws. Reconnect and lock the audio port connector's cable and the three display cables. Align the right hinge cover with the right hinge and secure it with the single T8 Torx screw. Slide the RSSD into its socket at about a 15 degree angle and then secure it in place with a T3 Torx screw. Position the power supply into the chassis and reconnect the two power supply cables to the motherboard. Secure the power supply with the H5 hex standoff and a T8 Torx screw. Reinstall the power plug receptacles H5 hex standoff and the T8 Torx screw to secure it to the chassis. Slide the left hinge cover into place, making sure the power plug wires are rounded under the hinge cover, and then secure it with a single T8 Torx screw. Reinstall a thermal pad to the RSSD, and then align and place a new thermal module into the chassis. While holding the thermal module in place with one hand, tighten the eight captive screws securing it to the motherboard. Using your H5 hex socket, reinstall the standoff underneath the right hinge. Hold the fan cover at about a 45 degree angle and carefully reconnect the speaker and two fan cables. Position the fan cover in place, making sure not to fold or crush any cables, and then secure it using eight T8 Torx screws. Align the tabs of the cosmetic plate with the openings on the fan cover and then snap it into place. Reinstall the four T8 Torx screws securing the cosmetic plate. Before installing the non-skid feet, a continuity test must be performed to verify the device has been correctly reassembled. Situations like improper cable routing, pinched wires, foreign objects, and solder bridges can create a shock hazard when the device is plugged in. To perform the test, set up your multimeter for continuity testing, and then insert a USB cable into one of the USB ports on the back of the machine. Test all three of the power supply receptacle pins for continuity with the exposed metal shell of the USB cable. Verify the three pins have the following readings. The ground pin found in the center position should read less than 0.5 ohms. The neutral pin on the right should read greater than 50,000 ohms. And finally, the life pin on the left should read more than 50,000 ohms. If the device fails any portion of this test, remove the power supply and inspect the cables. If any damage is found, replace the power supply. Peel off each of the nonstick feet's adhesive backing and then press the foot into place for at least 15 seconds. Power on the device and run STT to ensure all device features and functions operate as expected.